this, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Listeners, this is Glynis McCarthy, co host of the Practice of Learning Teams podcast show. Learning Teams embraces and respects the need for functional diversity and the diversity of thought to be present and an integral part of organisational and worker learning. This approach acknowledges and makes visible the differences that exist between genders in the workforce in order to identify health and safety risks and implement, maintain and improve effective solutions. Today is an episode of our special podcast series on women's perspectives, adoption and approach on the new view of safety and learning teams, where I have a discussion with a woman who represents organisational leadership, industry advocacy, safety practitioner and the regulatory authority. We will explore that individual's own journey the role of gender in safety and the potential of the new view of safety and of learning teams. On today's show, we hear from Deirdre Lewis, General Manager, HSC, Energy Markets at Origin Energy. Deirdre is based in Sydney, Australia. Origin is one of Australia's leading energy companies, exploring, generating and delivering energy to over 4 million customer accounts. They have an important role to play in providing electricity, natural gas, solar and LPG to Australian communities and work every day to make energy more affordable, more sustainable, smarter and easier for customers. Please join me and my special guest Deirdre as we learn and improve together. Um, one of the yeah. things that I think ties us together is the use of learning teams. So you, you know through this podcast that that's something that we're really interested in and really interested in, in how do you hone a craft, particularly around learning teams. So my question to you is then, how do you use them in your own practice? Oh, we've started to use them and they are fantastic. So we we, we started with, um, with one that... Um, <laughs> learning from work when it's gone well and that was really a good way I think to start in the business because it it sort of felt not as different or not as confronting potentially Um, and we've progressively been using them for all sorts of different things so things that go well things that um, we've just done one around where we've seen weak signals through an audit um, that was done in the business and we've gone oh isn't that interesting let's explore the weak signals rather than just putting an audit action against something and that's been fantastic or somebody's come to me and said Oh, I've just gone down, it was one of my people actually to this work area and um, to do a, um, a, a physical assessment um, in that area is, and um, and he came back and we had this really great conversation about how hard the job was. I'm like, well, oh, isn't that interesting? And then somebody else popped in because we're having a conversation. Um, he said, oh, yeah, that is the worst job in the plant. It's really, really bad. And I said, oh, isn't that interesting? And he goes, oh, I couldn't do that now. I really hurt myself. And I said, oh, do people hurt themselves doing that much? And they go, oh, no, nobody ever hurts themselves doing that. So I so I said, well, isn't that really curious? Why don't we go and find out? So we engaged our contractors and had a brilliant learning team down there. So learned so much about how our contractors are working, how we're working with them, how um, they've adapted. And a lot of that knowledge, it just sits within a very small group of people within our work team. So if we lost that knowledge, we would be in a world of pain. So I think, and those are things that we probably have never really discussed before. Um, and we're also doing um, learning teams where we've had an injury and then all, all these things are coming out about our culture um, and what happens when there's an injury and um, how we how we we potentially lose the ability to learn because we're so focused on the event. Um, and so we're using it in so many different ways. And what I'm finding is that um, because we've got some skilled facilitators now that um, 
they're skilled but they're also learning so when we go in there we go we we don't know how to do this particularly well we're learning our craft as we go we're not experts in doing learning teams so we need your help um but also really explaining the context about why we're there and and how we want to learn from them and their experience so i think it really opens up this whole piece around um psychological safety or whatever you want to call it and so people really start to talk to each other and when you know it's really humming is when you don't need to ask the questions anymore and people are start asking each other the questions and it's like this it's almost like a light bulb goes on for people and people love being involved in it they love telling their story they want to be part of the solution when the actions drop out um and yeah so uh, we're doing it in in the safety space, but we're also starting to now think about how we can use learning teams in other areas as well. There's conversations about, can we use this when we've got a customer issue? Can we use it when we've got um, issues around process? Can we use it around, you know, you know, it might be a quality thing or whatever it is, because what learning teams really is, is about learning. So it doesn't really matter what you're learning about, those sorts of environments you can build um, to learn about anything. So um, I think this will just be an evolving thing for us and we'll, um, continue to use them everywhere we see an opportunity to learn at least that's what i'm hoping <laughs> i think one of the things that you sort of mentioned before you know when you've got somebody new that comes into the profession one of the things they have to understand is context and you find that context out by being immersed um, by going yes. out and talking to people and one of the things that you build is trust you build trust both with with yourself and that person i think learning teams is almost an extension to that I think that, that really one of the fundamental tenets of a learning team is about trust. It's trust of the individuals who participate in the learning team with the facilitator, but more importantly, it's also trust that the organization is going to do something with that information in a way that you know is positive, it keeps moving forward. So it's not surprising then if you're having good success with learning teams, that you're now starting to use it in different ways within the organization outside of something that's strictly speaking to do with safety. Um, if I think about then how you harness that diversity within those learning teams, you know, how do you how do you see that continuing on in the organization that you work for? Oh, it's it's really interesting because we've been talking a bit about this, both in terms of facilitators um, as well as the teams you pull together. So I might talk about facilitators first and then talk about team. Um, so what we've been doing is getting people from, so I, I look after you know five business units. So I might get a facilitator from one business unit to facilitate in another business unit so that they don't they're not immersed in their own business unit they're actually they know the business but um they're not in that business um um so we might do that or we might get somebody who's really a, a very people person or an extrovert and have somebody who's much more um uh, 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 of a, a, a thinker um, who's also supporting the learning team's process. So having diversity with your facilitators, I think, is really important um, and trust between them to know that each other's got each other's back. One will think a bit slower, one will think a bit quicker. So they kind of um, can bounce off each other, but also support each other in that environment. So try and marry up people who um, facilitate really well together. Um, um, and then we pay it forward to somebody else. So, so the person who's the lead will then um, uh, help to develop the capability of a newer person who hasn't done it before. Um, and then in terms of the teams, we've been really careful about this or mindful of it. It's probably the, the, the better word. Um, trying to get diversity across the team. So some of the real insights that we've had from our learning teams is from people who are reliant on each other to get a job done, but may have never ever had a conversation, which sometimes just kind of makes your head kind of, you know, explode a little bit. Like how can you guys be so connected in terms of the work that you do and never have a conversation? So it's almost like the downstream of a process, um, somebody upstream has never really had a conversation with the downstream person who's driving the digger or, but they might be ordering the product, if you like, and then the, the impact of that will have an impact on the person who's doing the work. 
but everyone's got their own pointy end. So I think making sure that you've got people in the room who represent the total job stream, you don't always get that right at the beginning, but I think um, really trying to understand the complexity of what you're trying to do, not just bring the usual suspects together um, and to understand the business isn't a linear thing. It, it, it is, um, you know, it's actually a, a, a complex um, in a connection of all these people doing all these jobs and having as many different voices in the room you can without having too many people because as soon as you have too many people in a learning team, you kind of, oh, it's really difficult to facilitate. So, um, but I think the voices of um, all sorts of people are super important. So genders in their, um, you know, thought you know, diversity of thought, diversity of style, diversity of, um, you know, the way that you operate, um, the way that you communicate, everything. And so then you think about how do you help people in that um, space to find their voice? And that's where the, I guess, the skill of the facilitators comes in. So it sounds to me like you've got some really good talent that you're really fostering within your teams, um, particularly around that facilitation side. Also, it sounds to me like you're having some really good successes with your learning teams and really building that sort of trust and allowing people to sort of sit in that space of being in the solution as opposed to the problem. How are you also harnessing it from a, an organisational point of view? So how are you harnessing that, la that learning from an organisational side? Yeah, I think it's a really good question because we have spoken about the learning team process a bit, but I think one of the things that's really important is to how do you engage your broader organisation and your board or your executive um, in that learning as well. So what I've been doing is taking the, the, the output, if you like, and taking the conversations that have been going on as part of the learning team's process. So it might be, the learning teams themselves have been talking to their peers or people who are in their work groups around um, what they learn. They get really excited. Um, and so I don't want it to get stuck there. So then what I'm doing is bringing um, that to life through doing short videos and writing board papers that actually talk about the process that we go through and we can compare it with traditional processes um, and go, well, these are really good processes that we've had in the past, but they got us to a particular place. Um, and we've done some really good stuff with that place, but now we're using this technique as well. And being able to supplement it with a different kind of learning, if you like, has been really um, advantageous to the organization. And this is what it looks like in terms of the types of things that are coming out and the types of things we're seeing coming out are more um, systemic sort of things or cultural things or things that as an organization, we can really get insight into how organization um, works as an entity versus, uh, you know, the it might be the job that we unpicked, if you like. At the, at the learning team and they're actually telling us stuff like, oh, you know, um, it might be uh, how we're interfacing with the contractors at that pointy end of the work was like this, but actually it reflects a deeper organisational learning that we may have around how we do procurement or how we manage contracts in general. And so being able to have that uh, more, um, uh, we're having a more mature conversation end to end. It's just that the touch points are different. So I think it's about then how do you communicate to each of the touch points so people can understand the value and then we're turning the conversation into less of a technical conversation around the widget to being more of a, oh, a conversation around, oh, have we got a systemic issue here or have we put too much work onto a particular group of people or how have we actually supported work to go well versus, you know, thinking about, well, we need to buy more widgets or we need to... Um, get a better widget or we need to you know put those widgets everywhere you know it's not it's not that conversation anymore so we still might need to do that but we're having a much more mature conversation I think about um our culture as a business that means we really yeah. have to have that kind of ability to do that nuanced narrative um, to really look at how all of those parts come together to make up an overall system rather than drilling down and looking at kind of the individual bits without actually pulling it all back together again. 
And for me, that kind of comes back to something you said a little bit earlier on in terms of one of your strengths, or something that I perceive as one of your strengths at least, is about that kind of that bravery, um, about you know being able to go back and kind of challenge the status quo and look at it from from looking at it across the board rather than just sort of drilling down and looking at individual parts. Um, and so that means that the organisation itself have to go on a bit of a journey. And this is what I hear from other people who are doing learning teams, is that they nail their craft, so they get quite good at running the learning teams, but are almost sort of stuck, not quite sure how to push it out through into the business um, and sometimes don't have, a, a, I suppose, a strong enough voice for it to really resonate where it needs to within the organisation so that the organisation sees that there is value beyond this individual team looking at this individual issue. Yeah, so I think um, what I'm finding is that the people who are involved in the learning teams, it's its like a, um, they're, they're, I think initially when they're first involved, they're a bit, oh gee, I don't know what this is all about and they're a little bit hesitant, but once they've been involved, they are the advocates of it. So they like almost entirely are swung over by the process. So you end up with, you know, every time you do it, seven extra advocates. So they're actually, out there in the business going, yeah, can we do another one? What about this? What about that? So I think those learnings are happening. I think the courage really comes with, um, and I think we were talking about it a little bit before around, um, if you think about it from a HSC professional, we have to hone the craft around how you do them. But I think from an organisational perspective, we're really challenging some paradigms, I think, that are well and truly entrenched in an organisation about, um, you know, how you do this kind of thing, because it's actually part of a, 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 our culture and I'll talk ours as in macro not just my organization but ours as a as a as a country or as a as a world um to find and fix because that gives us a sense of real um purpose and achievement and I think that um we're wed to that so if you if you're really deeply learning you might not actually get to the find and fix as quickly as you would if you did a very linear process and so when you've built your career on a find and fix kind of way it, you're actually challenging people's or they might feel that you're challenging their expertise um, and their ability to find and fix or their paradigm on which they've actually built their career whatever it is in and so it is actually really confronting I think it's been confronting as a professional um, for me and also for my team to kind of get my head around it and I also think that organizationally we've got people who've been around a long time and who have built their careers on um, on success that's been achieved in a different way to what what we're talking about now and that goes to me too uh, you know I look at it and I go well actually I've probably been promoted because I'm really good at executing work <laughs> that's probably why I got promoted you know, more than once, I would imagine. Um, and so now I, I, I've sort of had to really challenge myself and go, well, actually, what do I believe? And um, if I look at that, I go, well, do I believe doing more stuff and executing more work is going to help my organisation get better? And the question is, sometimes <laughs> uh, and sometimes not so I think uh, then it's a whole shift in how you think about adding value to your organization so sometimes you you really truly really truly do not want another form you really truly don't want another procedure what you really truly need to do is to think deeply about whether or not you're going to blame someone or you're going to actually go well they breached the rule but oh my goodness they've been so truthful and we've learned all this stuff what way are we going to turn like what's our choice here because as soon as you shut down that learning you instantly will um, erode trust I won't say destroy it but it's much harder to rebuild it if you for example go into a learning team find out something that's occurred that's not primary to um so to the not that you're looking at the event because that's the boring bit but primary to what you're talking about and then the temptation could be if you were um old school thinking well I, I found that out and so 
don't I need to punish them or don't I need to um, fix that or don't I need to do something with that? So we kind of rushed to solution very quickly because we're so used to moving fast. And I think there's a real challenge, I think, to in a very fast paced world to slow down so that you can speed up. Yeah. So yeah, you could be more I, expedient, I think. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, you've got to slow it down so you understand. You understand that context. So actually, you know where where the bumps are along the way, but also you know where you can speed up. You can do it safely. Yeah, and, kind of and you can fix the right thing then. Like you're not trying to fix something that's not broken or that's not an issue because sometimes that's what we do. We spend time fixing the wrong thing. So there's nothing wrong with fixing stuff. Don't hear me say that. It's just more that sometimes we rush to the answer before we've even worked out what the question is. <laughs> so. Yeah. What I really hear from all of this is diversity, whether it be about gender diversity, whether it be age diversity, perspective diversity, but actually what we need to do is gain diversity. Um, and we need to do that from an individual practitioner point of view. We need to do that from you know a learning team's point of view, but we also need to do it at an organizational level, you know, is really gain that diversity of thought so that we're looking at things from lots of different perspectives. And so that we're not kind of, like you say, jumping to the conclusion rather than actually going on a journey and having a good understanding of what are the things that are causing us some pain or some pinch points or, or some rubs along the way, but actually we have a really good understanding of how work really is being done and where can our systems tighten up. Yeah, and I think I think it's really interesting. So going back to one of the questions you asked me before, I think that, you know, that can be quite daunting if you're, um, uh, sitting in a space of trying to lead some change, um, especially if you're a woman in a very male-dominated environment because um, it is tricky. And I think being able to hone your skills of articulation and to be able to influence people outside of a room versus when you're in a room is just really important. And then trying to show people the benefits um, of what you know, some of these new tools can give an organisation is, um, it's not always easy to do that when you've got a lot of um, uh, old thinkers or people who haven't been exposed to this kind of thinking. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, I think, um, both at middle management level, senior management level. I think lower down the organisation, These, the, the, what I'm hearing is, oh, thank goodness, you're asking us finally. <laughs> so so they get it really quickly. I think it's more than about how do we how do we help the rest of the organisation who are not so close to the work to really get it as well. So, um, but um, it's exciting. It's really exciting. I think there's so much opportunity in this for us as a as a cohort and um you know if i if i think about it and you think about productivity you think about um quality you think about um customer service you think about all of those things this this is just this, safety just the start of this and often safety is at the forefront of some of these journeys i think um and i look at this and i think well what customer problem could you not pull together sit down with your customer with your scheduler with your drivers with whoever it is and actually nut out a solution to something that can be quite complex so it you know for me it's um yeah the diversity of uh, is is absolutely um crucial not just in this but it as organizations we really we need to not just talk about it but we need to embrace it and when somebody brings a diverse point of view we need to listen so i think that's one of the skills as an organization probably all organizations we've we've honed the craft of um for example fixing stuff or even questions maybe you are getting better at asking better questions but i'm not sure that we've yet understood how to listen as well as we could and so i think that's the next step is how do we listen well as individuals and then also as an organization so there's lots of um different skills that i think you know will help us along the journey or the voyage as eric colnagel calls it so yeah absolutely <laughs> if i was to ask you one parting question then if you were to think of somebody that was um, as a safety leader and is wanting to make some changes you know, is really wanting to um, really challenge what they're doing currently and become much more of a learning organisation. What would you say that they need to start to think about? Um, 
So probably, look, I think everyone's on their own journey. So it's really hard to give advice to a, a, a group of people, if you like. But I'll maybe talk about my own experience. I spent a lot of time um, uh, doing stuff like, you know, and then I, I really started to think about, well, um, how do I just pause for a minute? and think about my own learning so that I can help my organization. So I kind of took a step back and thought about, well, what's missing for me? What am I, what, what do I need to learn? Um, and um, so I just started reading more. There's so much information out there. Like, you know, you guys have written a great book. There's lots of there's lots of materials out there. Eric's got some great books, Todd. Sydney Deck has got some really great materials. So I think educate yourself um, and try and understand what it is you, 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 you think and then look at what your organisation needs. So it's about them marrying the context because what I'm doing, I probably couldn't have done in my organisation five years ago because the organisation wasn't ready from a timing perspective. So you could try and, you know, take what I'm doing and put it into another organisation who's in a completely different place and fail miserably. So I think there's a piece around understanding yourself, where you're at in your own personal journey as a professional, understand your organisation and understand where they're at. They might still be in a place where they're not even investigating anything. And so it's like, oh, well, how do you get them to a learning team space where they don't even know that they need to even find stuff out? (laughs) So I think... um, that's super important and I think as a as a person who's trying to go on this journey I think start to think start to think not just do so thinking is super important so take the time to think the world is moving fast and um, we do more than we think sometimes and we have to make space yeah, look, I wholeheartedly agree with, with your last sentiment there. Coming from an adult education background, for me, when I was working with adults with language or literacy issues, it was always about know where you currently are, know where you want to get to, and formulate a plan. Um, yeah. yeah. So I and then be ready, and then be ready to change your plan because ultimately, things change. So don't change where your purpose is or where you want to go, but you might need to change your plan to suit the context of where you're at yeah so you might need to change that journey ever so slightly the different steps but yeah have a purpose in mind um look Deidre I want to thank you very much for your time today um this has been a fantastic thoughtful conversation with you um we've we've traversed lots of different topics and but we've kept really consistent to to a number of themes um so thank you so much for your time today um and I hope that I have an opportunity to do this again in the future always a pleasure talking to you thank you Thank you listeners for being part of this podcast. We would love to hear your learnings or other topics you would like us to explore about learning teams. Go to www.podcastlearnings.com and give us your feedback. Become part of the community of practice with learning teams. Go to www.learningteamscommunity.com, support the authors of the practice of learning teams, purchase the book from amazon.com or go to www.learningteamsbook.com for an inside look and other free book resources from the authors. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system or transmitted in any any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.